Dear students, in the past modules we have been studying about the crime scene, types of crime scenes, significance of crime scene, physical evidences, types of physical evidences, trace evidences and types of trace evidences. After studying this module, you shall be able to learn about the evidences which an investigator may encounter at the crime scene, procedures and precautions to collect evidence and how to package these evidences. First, evidence encounter at the crime scene. Depending on the crime occurred, various types of evidences are recovered from the crime scene. An investigating officer may encounter with DNA evidence, impression evidence such as fingerprint, shoe print, etc., blood, semen, saliva and other body fluids, firearms and ammunition such as gun, bullet, shells, etc., GSR that is gunshot residue, swabs from shooting victims, arson evidence like flammables, ignition source, etc., wood and absorbent materials, chemicals and controlled substances like drugs, trace evidences like hair, fibers, soil, etc., documents, storage devices such as compact disc, DVDs, floppy disk, hard disk, etc., victims' clothing, fingernail scrappings, vaginal swabs, anal and oral swabs, glass, charred clothing or debris and other potential evidences. Next is collection of evidence. An investigating officer should remain cautious while collecting evidence from the crime scene. He should always keep in mind the following points. What evidence should be collected? How to collect the evidence? Whether the evidence collected will support the investigation or not. Collection of evidences at the crime scene is a two-step procedure. First, search for and collect large and obvious items. Second, collect smaller items of physical evidence next, but the evidence that is easily lost or fragile is collected first. An investigating officer should follow the following precautions while collecting an evidence. Evidence should not be removed from its source or from its original place when possible. Evidence should be packaged individually to prevent breakage, spoilage and contamination with other evidences. Mark all evidences as it is being collected if possible or package and mark the outside of the package. Evidence should be marked with the receiving officer's initials, the location from which the evidence is recovered and the date of recovery. A chain of custody must be maintained. A list of persons who came into possession of an item of evidence should be maintained in order to support the investigation. Always wear gloves of latex or rubber gloves in order to prevent the contamination of DNA evidence. Take great care when handling evidence not to destroy fragile fingerprints or other impressions. Any items with residual moisture or bodily fluids should be thoroughly air dried before packaging. Each different piece of physical evidence must be packaged separately. Evidence must be handled with forceps, gloved hands only or similar tools. Flashlights or alternate source of light that is ALF are used to help identify evidence for collection. 
Once identified and document, the evidence must be collected, preserved, packaged and inventorized in preparation for submission to the crime lab. Reference or standard samples should be collected from relevant persons or from the scene and are used for comparison. Disposable gloves are always worn and often changed to protect evidence from contamination. Impression evidence like fingerprint, shoe print, etc. may be identified by sight. Alternate light sources or chemical reagents are enhanced by use of special photographic techniques or by chemical developers or collected by lifting tape or molding materials. Biological evidence like blood, semen, etc may be identified by sight, alternate light source or chemical reagent collected with sterile swabs, firearms and ammunition, gun, bullet, shell etc must be rendered safe for transport. Arson evidences, flammables, ignition source etc may be located by sight and smell. Place carpet, wood and absorbent materials in clean paint cans and seal lid. Place flammable liquids in glass bottle with tight fitting lid. Chemicals and controlled substances such as drugs may be located by visual observation. Chemical field tests are used to classify or identify them at the scene of crime. Trace evidences such as hair, fibers, soil etc may be extremely small or microscopic. They should be collected by using forceps, tweezers, scrapping, taping or vacuuming. Document and collect questioned and known samples. Work in conjunction with medical examiner for homicide evidence collection. The medical examiner or coroner will examine the victim to establish a cause and manner of death and preserve tissues and organs for analysis. They may also collect some of the following evidences. Victim's clothing, fingernail scrappings, body hair, blood, vaginal, anal and oral swabs, bullets or other objects inside the body, GSR swabs from shooting victims. Now we shall go through the packaging of evidence. Physical evidence must be handled and packaged in a way that prevents any change from occurring. The evidence must be properly packaged according to type and should be properly labeled and sealed with appropriate initials to maintain chain of custody. The integrity of evidence is best maintained when it is kept in its original conditions as found at the crime scene. Trace evidence should not be removed from the objects they are found on unless it is impossible to transport the item. The well prepared evidence collector will arrive at a crime scene with a large assortment of packaging materials and tools ready to encounter any type of situation. Physical evidence must be collected and packaged correctly so it does not change from the time it was collected to the time it was processed by the crime lab. Each item must be placed in a separate container in order to prevent cross contamination. The package should be clearly labeled and sealed with evidence tape. Take entire piece of evidence as it is found at the scene if possible. Wet blood should either dry first and then scrapped or can be collected on a swab. Hair, glass, fiber and other types of trace evidences should be stored in indestructible plastic pill bottles with pressure lids or in a binge envelopes, screw cap glass vials or cardboard pill.
pill boxes. Paper bags and boxes can be used for bigger or heavier pieces of evidence. For powders such as drugs or other ordinary mailing envelopes should not be used because powders will leak out of their corners. Arson evidence is placed in clean paint cans. Blood stained things should be kept in paper bags or manila envelopes. Blood soaked clothing should not be reserved in airtight vessels as the surrounding moisture can cause the development of mildew and mold and destroy the blood. All clothing should be air dried and independently put in storage in paper bags. Charred clothing or debris on the contrary must be stored in airtight containers so that evaporation of volatile petroleum residues does not occur. All diverse articles or like articles collected at various places should be placed in isolated containers. Wrapping evidence independently avoids damage by contact and avoids cross-contamination. Forceps and similar apparatus may have to be used to pick up small items. Insignificant quantities of trace evidence may also be accessibly packed in a cautiously folded paper by what is called as a druggist fold. Though pill bottles, vessels, containers or beach envelopes are best universal containers for all trace evidences, two mostly found at crime scenes warrant special attention. If blood tint constituents are kept in airtight vessels, the accretion of moisture may reassure the development of mold that can ruin the evidential importance of blood. In these cases, packaging paper, fawn envelopes or paper bags are suggested for wrapping the materials. All evidence should be packaged separately. New and unused packaging materials must be used. Seal evidence using proper methods which prevents tampering. Though these kinds of sealable parcels are good for powders and other dry traces, blood stain and blood stain evidence is unlike. Blood stain evidence should not be packaged in airtight containers due to the moisture content of the blood. The blood will start to mold very quickly and this mold will damage the evidence item and the associated blood stain. For damp or bloody items, one should use brown paper bags of appropriate size, earth guard bags and butcher paper that can be folded and properly taped shut. Any items with residual moisture or bodily fluids should be thoroughly air dried and then packaged in a non-porous container such as paper or cardboard so as to prevent the destruction of DNA by bacteria, mold, etc. Arson evidences such as flammables, ignition sources, etc. may be located by sight and smell. Place carpet, wood and absorbent materials in clean paint cans and seal the lid. Place flammable liquids in glass bottle with tight fitting lid. Chemicals and controlled substances such as drugs may be located by visual observation. Chemical field tests are used to classify or identify them at the scene of crime. Place the liquids or solids in a screw cap jar or the Y. Next is chain of custody. After all the collected evidences have been packaged properly, they should be properly labeled. After labeling, the next step is to transport all the packed evidences to the crime lab for forensic analysis or for further evaluation. In order to maintain all items, a complete and correct chain of custody must be maintained for the items. This is not necessary that the evidence collector 
only will transport the evidence to the laboratory. Officer transports the evidence to the lab. That's why maintenance of chain of custody log must be maintained indicating the transfer of custody to and from every individual who is involved in transporting or storing the evidence until it gets into the crime lab. These include the collecting officer who collects the evidences from the crime scene, the transportation officer who transports the collected and packaged evidence from crime scene to the laboratory, any evidence storage officer if the evidence is stored prior to taking it to the lab, any further transportation officer, anyone who gets into the evidence for any reason, the laboratory evidence collection person and any other person involved in the whole process. Send all evidence to the crime lab, registered or certified mail, return receipt requested to maintain the chain of custody. Evidence should not be removed from its source or from its original place, if possible. Evidence should be packaged individually to prevent breakage, spoilage and contamination with other evidences. A chain of custody must be maintained. A list of persons who came into possession of an item of evidence should be maintained in order to support the investigation. Use of gloves either of latex or rubber is must in order to prevent the contamination of DNA evidence. While handling evidence, great care is required in order to prevent destruction of fragile evidences like fingerprints or other impressions. Reference or standard samples should be collected from relevant persons or from the scene and are used for the purpose of comparison. Impression evidences such as fingerprints, shoe prints, etc. may be identified by sight, ALS that is alternate light sources or chemical reagent or enhanced by use of special photographic techniques or by the use of chemical developers or collected by lifting tape or molding materials. Here glass, fibers and other trace evidences should be stored in unbreakable plastic pill bottles with pressure lid or in manila envelopes, screw cap glass vials or cardboard pill boxes. Blood soaked clothing must not be stored in airtight containers because the trapped moisture may cause the growth of mild dew and destroy the blood. Each different item collected at different locations must be placed in separate containers to prevent damage through contact and prevent cross contamination.